So good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar session. As today marks the single use plastic day, we are here to educate ourselves on um, what single use plastic is all about. And we are joined here with our, our speaker, who is Susan Amakansa. She works as a project coordinator at the FISA Recycling Limited, a recycling company that deals in the recovery of plastic waste from household religious body organizations and schools. Our topic for today is single use plastics and the way forward. Please help me welcome Susan. I should take the platform to educate us on the use of single use I, I plastics don't and its impact in the way forward. Thank you. Yes, we have done your introduction. Uh, okay, thank you. So I'll say something little about my organization that we delve into what we have for today. So as mentioned earlier, I work with CISA Recycling Limited. Um, it's a recycling organization that deals in the collection of plastic bottles, water sachet, beverage cans, and paper. We work with um, organizations, we work with schools, we also work with religious bodies too as well. So we work with both Muslims and then Christians. And then what happens is that with the uh, schools, we give them a, a beam, a metallic cage kind of beam. We give it to the schools to enhance their collection process. So we go to some schools and then the head teachers will be like, we are interested in this project, but we don't have enough beans for collection. So we present them with the beans and then it helps them in their collection processes. And then at the end of the day, we end up giving them something little to support what they are doing. And so basically that's it. We, it runs across so that with the individuals. There are some people who do this basically as their means of livelihood. So at the end of, it depends on how they want their payment. Either they want it by weekly or by daily, monthly, however they want it, we do that payment for them and then it helps us. And when the plastics are being collected from the um, households, organizations, religious bodies, and the rest, we take it to our, uh, our center. So currently we have three centers. There's one at Nungwa, there's one at Ladma, um, Labadi Road. There's one too at Kwabinya. So basically the main office of the organization is located at Kwabinya. So when you come to Kwabinya, we have machines that end up crashing the plastics after the collections, people do segregation. It's being segregated into, after the plastics have been collected, that's the plastic bottles. We have colors for them. We have the, the blue, we have the white, we have the green, we have the brown. So we separate them into these colors, we move the covers from them, and then the labels around them. Then we either bail it, like how, when we go to town, see how the false bills are being built, or we crash them into tiny particles called flakes. Then, we either export or sell locally to some organizations like Mini Plus, where they use it for the manufacturing of plastic tables and plastic chairs. So that's something brief about my organization. So I'd like us to move into what we have for tonight. Please, can you all hear me? It's like I'm the only one speaking. Can't hear anyone. Hello. We can hear you, Amma. Thank you. Hey. Hello. I can hear you. Okay. Feel okay. free to. Okay. okay. He's like, I'm the only one talking, so you no hear me. Amma, okay. you'll be the only one speaking. Um, so, so please, I'm going to speak so you are done, okay? Okay. It's fine. Okay, sure, sure. Okay. Um. So am I going to do it without the slides? It's like the screen is not... Oh, Okay. Um, so I've mentioned something, I've said something little about CISA Recycling Limited. So I think we can go on to the next, the next slide. Okay, please, the next. Okay, so when we come to our, our individual homes or our organizations or religious bodies as to wherever we find ourselves, there are so many types of waste that we end up seeing day in and day out. So there are some forms like liquid waste, so in our households, when we enter into the kitchen, the waste we get from washing of our utensils, washing of our um, ingredients for cooking, the water we get from the water we get after we are done washing, it's all these ones are being classified as 
as liquid waste. And then also there's solid waste. So solid waste, they come in so many ways, like the plastic waste, contains of the plastic waste. So this one contains of bags, containers, jars, bottles, and many other products that can be found in our households. So plastics are not biodegradable, but some types of plastics can be recycled. And so we advise that in our day-to-day -day activities in our households, we are not supposed to mix the plastic with the other form of waste. It should be sorted and placed in a separate bin to, to help reduce the waste you are generating. Because when their plastics are being added to our normal everyday waste generation, realize that our, our beans get full early. But then we are able to separate the plastic waste from it. The other forms of waste, it helps reduce the amount of waste that we generate. Please, can we move on to the next slide? Yes. So under the um, solid waste, we have the paper and cardboard. So there are packaging materials, newspapers, cardboards, and other products. For the paper, they can be they can easily be recycled and reused. So at our end, there's a, a factory at um, Tishi, along the Tishi, uh, this hospital, uh, Lekma Hospital. There's uh, paper for them, that's the only thing they do, paper recycling. So they reuse into exercise books for schools. So sometimes, when work with some organizations, they are of the view that when you are done collecting the plastic waste from us, we want you to generate exercise books from them and then give it to this particular school for us. So in a way of giving back to society, through the organization, we come together with them and then we give back to the students. And then also we have our tins and metal. So like our milo conkos, our milk cans, our tin tomatoes, and all other things. These ones can also be recycled. I mean, they, at the end of the day, they end up giving you something little for what you are giving to them. Here's the next slide. Okay, so we have the organic waste, like the food waste, the garden waste, the manure and rotting meats. They are all found and that can use them as for, for um, farming, your backyard garden, you can use it for it. Okay, so please the next, the next slide. Okay, so um, according to the World Bank, a research was conducted. Um, the year has came the But then according to the World Bank annually in our country, Ghana, but out of the 1 million, only 5% 10% of these plastics are being recycled. And only 5% of Ghanaians are sorting waste at source. That is what I spoke about earlier, separating your plastic waste from your everyday waste. That's the sorting waste at source. So only 5% of our entire population as a nation engages in the sorting of waste at source. And only 5 to 10% of these plastics that are being produced annually are being recycled. So I'm sure you are asking yourself, where then do the remaining 90% end up? Please, uh, next slide. So we realize that um, our gutters are always choked with plastics. There's flooding all over. Malaria attack all over. Um, and then in the year 2022, CISA and Center for Scientific Institute and Research, CSIR, their water department, we conducted a research. They wanted to find out, the, the fishermen were complaining that sometimes when they go for fishing, they end up harvesting more plastics than the fish. So the, the, the department wanted to find out if probably the, what these fishermen are seeing is true. Then we also have to find out if the plastics are being chewed by the fishes. So, of the day of the research was that the fishes in the sea have begun chewing the plastics. 
<laughs> so you can ask yourself if these fishes chew their plastic and then at the end of the day you also go to market and then buy the fish and then you bring it to the house you realize that you are buying sickness for yourself so we did a research with them and then we wanted to know the outcome of it and then that was what we saw because the plastics are made up of a lot of chemicals and which are very harmful to the human health please the next slide <coughs> So we are saying that come one of the biggest and complex challenges of this century. And as a complex challenge, it requires innovative and integrated solutions to reduce additional costs. So what happens is that um the our gutters are choked, our lives are at risk, like if our fishes in the sea have already begun chewing the plastic, it's very dangerous to our human health. And as a result of this, Sita recycling was birthed out of the plastic waste, like it was birthed as a result of the improper waste, plastic waste management in our country. So at Sita, we are trying our possible best to help reduce the plastic waste that we are seeing in our country. It's not only the problem of Ghana, it's a global problem. So we go for workshops and then you realize that it's not only Ghana that is suffering from this plastic issue. Almost everyone is suffering from this plastic issue. Please, can we go to the next slide? <clears throat> so we are saying that although plastics are a globally important material with diverse applications in the food and beverage industry, textiles, construction, electronic and electrical equipment, medicine and pharmacy, agriculture amongst others. There are many environmental concerns associated with it. I think I've already mentioned some of them, like our gut has been choked, a malaria outbreak, cholera outbreak, and all that. It all comes as a result of our improper plastic waste management. These are the next slide. So, Talking about this, the hazards, please, the next slide. Okay. Okay. So, according to a research conducted in constitute about 26% of the total volume of all plastics used. So, <laughs> our packaging, you go to supermarkets, you buy the they will give you a, a polythen for this. And you buy that, they'll give you another polythen. I remember one time I went to Melcom to purchase some items for my home. And then like every item I bought, the lady wanted to give me a separate polythen for, for the packaging. And we got to a point, I told her, no, they're, 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 they are too much. So she just give me a bigger one and I put everything in it. So I think we can also do, we can all come together and do that. And then uh, according to their research, they said it is a much preferred choice by both Food users and consumers due to its lightweight nature and ability to store food and prevent it from contamination. So there are some people when they go to shops and then even in traffic, we can I can use that. They will buy something in traffic, they'll be like, now I'm a robber. Meanwhile, to the person can either put it in his or her bag, or maybe in whatsoever the person is holding. But then we still insist on the extra rubber. You get home and then it becomes a whole problem for us. This is the next slide. Ghana currently imports about 10,000 metric tons of plastics annually. So aside the 1 million that we produce ourselves, about 10,000 metric tons of plastics are also imported into the country. So 1 million plus the 10,000 that are also being imported. You can see the amount of effects that it has on us as a nation. Please, the next slide. So according to research, the top four companies in the world that produce more plastics are one, Coca-Cola, two, Pepsi, three, Nestle, and then the fourth one, Unilever. We can all attest to the fact that they produce a whole lot of plastics in our world today. Please, the next slide. So, 
Rwanda, in its attempt to reduce plastic waste in the year 2018, it became the world's first plastic free nation. 10 years after it introduced the ban on all plastic bags and plastic packaging. And they were very strict in enforcing its ban. And anyone caught with a plastic item in their country was to face a jail sentence of up to six months. Exactly. In Ghana, if they are to bring such a law into Ghana, I'll be all sure that this this 10 years ago over 10 years ago as Ghanaians that if we are asked to reduce the amount of plastics we use when we go out When we go out, Susanna, we willing, will we be willing to do that will we in traffic? Will we stop asking for more? There's a question we need to ask ourselves. So, so please, in Ghana, Rwanda has been mm -hmm. but sorry, sorry. improvement. So, Ghana, in its quest to reduce plastic, please, you can go ahead. Can, can you go back to Can you take it again? Because your network was breaking. Okay, on this particular slide. Yeah. Or the previous one. Okay. So I was saying that Rwanda have tried this. Ghana is also have also tried from the year 1960 to also reduce plastic pollution, but these policies have not been effective. So I was saying that Ghana in its quest to reduce plastic pollution has developed some policies which are not really effective. <laughs> some of these policies include environmental sanitation policy. From later in 1999. This policy has currently been amended and strategic action plans developed for implementation. In 1990, the Local Government Act was also introduced, Act 462 was also introduced. In 1999, Environmental Assessment Regulation Policy was also introduced. In the year 1960, Criminal Code Policy was also introduced. In 1996, Water Resource Commission Act was also introduced. The, the policies are many. National building regulations, all these ones were, have, they've all been introduced, but yet still, we are not seeing any improvements as a nation. Please, the next slide. So in addition to the above policies and legislation, the Ministry of Environment, Science and Technology, MESPI, the Environmental Protection Agency, the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development, and the Ministry of Health have prepared the following guidelines and standards for waste management. Please, the next slide. So, so we have the National Environmental Quality Guidelines, the Ghana Land Fail Guidelines, the man Manual for the Preparation of District Waste Management Plants in Ghana, Guidelines for the Management of Healthcare and Veterinary Waste in Ghana, Handbook for the Preparation of District Level Environmental Sanitation Strategies and Action Plans. All these policy, uh, po sorry, policies have been developed. But then one thing that we are the recycling um, and one, one problem that we have come to realize is that when these organizations, that's MESI, EPA, Ministry for Local Government and all that, when they come together to develop these policies, they, they do it on their own. They don't involve the relevant stakeholders in the recycling industry. So we have people who are into the plastic waste management. We have people who are into the organic waste management. We have people who are into the um, metal waste management. And we have people who are into the um, other forms of waste management. But then when they come together to, to draw policies, to develop policies for the nation, they don't involve we at the other end. So we come together because we are on the ground and we know what exactly is going on. They don't involve us to, to for us to let them know that, oh, at when we go on field or when we go for collection, these and these and that are the things that we see. 
but rather they'll go ahead, develop the policies themselves. And at the end of the day, we don't see any effect. The policies are there. They are just lying down. They are no, they've been implemented, but there are no actions have been taken with regards to them. Please, the next slide. Okay. Um this slide is a mistake. Please go on to the next one. Just to take your back. Good. Okay. So currently we have one policy and it was developed in in March 2020. The Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, MESTI. They developed a national plastic management policy. And after this was implemented, there have been series of workshops over workshops, but we still haven't seen it. I remember there was one conducted at Alisa, and they were like, oh, they will call us when it's time for us to come together, but no show. <laughs> Please, the next slide. So the policy that was developed, that's the National um, Plastic Management Policy. Um, uh, the policy is to build on a broader development. It's built on broader development with the aim of growing the economy, creating jobs, protecting the environment, and including mitigation of climate change. But this policy is, is, is to be enforced if it's being used. And this will create jobs for individuals because there will be recycling, there will be more recycling initiatives that will come up. So it will create jobs for the youth in our nation. It would even protect our environment and even reduce climate change. You cannot see how of late our weather, weather conditions here and there, the days we expect to rain, those are the days that the sun will so out and all that. The days that the, the sun is supposed to come out, those are the days that it rains. Like our climate has changed. And it would also help grow the economy because if people get jobs in their country, things are falling in place. At least it would help all of us in the nation. Please, the next slide. So the the policy also the policy aim will be achieved by enabling the development of a vibrant and market driven domestic recycling industry. So as part of the policy, they they had a plan of developing a domestic recycling industry. That's, uh, I don't know if we all use the um, Kolebu stretch towards the Mochi Road. There's this big recycling industry over there. So it would, if, if everything was to work, it would have been something like that because in that organization, they have plastic, they have organic, they have metallic, they do all forms of waste management over there. So that was part of the the idea of the, the policy that they would have they will have a domestic recycling industry in our country and it will result in an improved improved state of the environment and public health. It would also reduce future pressure on Ghana's natural resources and dependence on imported finished commodities. It would create jobs. There will be social economic development, especially at the base of the economic pyramid and amongst vulnerable community groups. At least our women our mothers, they'll get something to do at the end of the day. They'll earn something little at the end of the day. Please, the next slide. Okay. And um, the policy is also expected to contribute to the achievement of the African Union Agenda 2063 and several of the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals both of which the Republic of Ghana is a signature. This is the next slide. So the policy was built on four thematic areas. That's behavioral change, strategic planning and cross-sectoral collaboration, resource mobilization towards a circular economy, and good governance. Good governance, inclusiveness, and shared accountability. So, um, for the behavioral change, sometimes I, I I think and I see that is our mindset. I mean, we all think that oh, me na me me we are also of the view. So normally, 
at CETA, what we do is that we 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 love training the kids more than the adults because we believe that the kids are now growing up. So adapting to a habit is not that difficult. But with the adults, it takes a lot of time for us to adapt to a new, a new, like something new. It takes a while for us to adapt to a particular change. So normally we we love training their children because these ones, when they get home, at least if their mothers are not doing it right, they'll be able to teach their mothers that my you try and say my name you say we were asked to do it this way. And then the strategic planning, the government together with the relevant stakeholders are to come together and develop a plan that will help us in achieving our waste management, our plastic waste management in the country. And the resource mobilization towards a circular economy. So the circular economy is a simple definition I'll give us that when you take a particular product, you use it and use it and use it and use it until it, it wears out. So you can reuse, you can repair, you can do all sorts of things to it at all. The product finally wears out and then you show it away. And then good governance. What's our government also put in place? Good government, uh, sorry, governance, um, municipal assemblies, um, and all other relevant stakeholders can come together and have a shared accountability. We all take responsibility for every action that comes out of it. Please, the next slide. Okay, so what's the way forward? What can we do as individuals in our homes, in our churches, in our working place? What can we all do to help reduce the, the use of single plastics? And what can we also do to help reduce um, waste in our country? So please, the next slide. So we said intensive and more environmental education on plastics. So we believe that in our country, Ghana, people tend to, to listen more to their religious leaders, especially when it comes to our churches. When our religious leaders are saying something, we tend to listen to them the more, even than outsiders. So we normally go to the churches, we speak to the, their religious leaders, then they end up speaking to the people. As and when it's needed for us to come on board, we come on board to also share our ideas on it. And then also another um, thing that can we believe can also be done is that we all know that when we are about entering into an election period, we see series of adverts on the TV by the National Commission on Civic Education. So we believe that they can also come together and then maybe draw or come up with an advert or something that will educate people the more. So when people keep on seeing these adverts of the, on the TV, it helps to change their mindset about certain things. So if there's more intensive and more environmental education on plastics in our schools, in our churches, on TV, everywhere, like even on the radio, when we keep on hearing ads or jingles on the radio with regards to the uh, plastic waste management, we believe it will help us as a nation. Please, the next slide. So awareness creation. So after we have also heard the word, we can also encourage our friends and families to join the movement towards a more sustainable future. So you don't just hear the word and keep it to yourself. You also go about teaching your friends, educating your friends, educating your family members who didn't hear about it, who have not even heard or seen the adverts either on radio or TV. You educate them and then it keeps on going. You educate one person, you also end up educating another person. And just educating one person ends up with 10 to 15 people being educated on the same topic. Please, the next slide. So we say choose products with minimal packaging. So like I mentioned earlier, when you go for shopping, maybe at a shopping malls and all that, even in the markets, when you go to buy stuff, food stuff, it's best to go along with a bag. There's this form of bag that are being, they are being sold on the market these days. You can use them over and over and over and over. For those ones, they don't. It's difficult for them to wear out. You can. They are normally majority of them are are sewn out of a uh, um, glass sacks. There is some bottle that we all know. Majority of them are being sewn using these plastics. And then also, if possible, reduce the amount of plastics that you you receive when you go to the market. 
Please, the next slide. Yes, participate in beach and park cleanups. So there are some organizations that for them, the only thing they do is beach cleanup. That's the only thing they do, beach and park cleanups. So as you said, we don't do beach and park cleanups, but then when organizations reach out to us that, oh, we want to do this kind of cleanup and we want you on board, we go ahead and then we join them to engage in the beach cleanup. So when you hear of any beach cleanup, you can also join up so that we can also reduce the amount of plastics that surround our beaches. Here's the next slide. Supports plastic reduction policies. So there's a saying in Ghana that if you want to hide an information from a Ghanaian, you you can put it in the book, I hide it in the book. I don't know if I got it right. Right. So one thing that I'll I would advise is that I've, I've at least I've given a little information about what I know when it comes to plastic waste management. You can also go online, you can visit libraries and then know what the policies, the policies that are in place, so that at least we know what is existing, what is out there for our nation Ghana. So when you know these ones, then you also put in your ways and means you can also support these policies to help reduce the plastic pollution. Please, the next slide. Yes. So we, at CISA, we advise the practicing of the five hours in recycling. So the five hours basically come under the circular economy I mentioned earlier. So we say recycle, reduce, refuse, repair, and reuse. So um, when you're going in for plastic, you are going to town to buy plastic we should make sure the plastics that we are going in for they can be recycled look for the alternative that can be recycled we shouldn't just make sure the plastics can the, the poly bar can get us get products that can be recycled <laughs> We are saying that we should reduce the amount of plastics that we so sometimes when you go to the cocoa seller, you're buying cocoa, she'll tie it in a, in a, in a white wrapper for you. When she's done, she puts it in a black poly, she'll tie, put another poly, she'll tie. You are buying maybe cose or um both floats or something. That one too, she put it in another rubber, she'll tie, put another rubber, and at the end of the day, just one cocoa you are buying, you end up taking about four polythenes to your home. So you are saying that if possible, when you're going to the cocoa seller. You can go with your flax. If you are going to the watches seller, you can go with your bowl, your nice packaging bowl to buy your watch in it. This way, it would help to reduce the amount of waste. If you don't want to go with your boat, you can go in for the the um, the leaves, the the what we call watch buying. You can go in for those ones and then you use them. So use the amount of plastics we use, and then the reduce and refuse are basically the same. So if I come to your shop and then you are giving me like four policies at a certain, I can refuse to take them all and then just go in for one. And then the repair, you repair the ones, the plastics that you go in for. There are some that you think, oh, I can repair these ones. You just repair it and then keep on using until at the end of the day, it's wears out. Then, then you discard them. Then reuse, go in for plastics that can be reused at any time. Any day, any time you can use those ones. So like the bags I mentioned, you can go in with those that when you're going for your shopping, you always have it along with you. And then off you go for your shopping. Okay, please, the next slide. So in conclusion, we say that while the impact of single-use plastics products on our planet are undeniable, the power to reduce this damage lies in our hands. If we want to reduce the damage these plastics have on our planet and even on our individual lives, they lie in our hands. It's either we use the amount of plastics we are using. It's either we, we, we use them. It's either we repair them. It all depends on us. 
We can choose to make our planets plastic free. Remember every small change counts in the journey. Thank you. Thank you very much Amma, for this educated session. Um, do, we have, do we have any questions for Amma? Okay, so Habibati says thank you very much. Thank you too for the opportunity. Do we have any questions? Any questions? It's okay, great submission, great presentation. Thank you. All right, I think that the internet hasn't been too friendly with us, but um, we are grateful Amma has been able to pull it through. So Amma, thank you all very much for your time. So Isaac is asking, how is the government supporting your work? Hello, Ma. Can you hear us? Hello, Ama. Hmm. I think someone is asking a question. How is the government supporting your work? Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hello, Amma. We can hear you. So, how is the government supporting? Hello. Okay. Yes. So, I was I was saying that um we are not receiving we've not received any support from the government. We are just coexisting. So we are rather supporting ourselves in the industry. So. When we somebody calls us and we are like, oh no, this one day my. Hello. We can hear you. Okay, so my question is, um, I don't know, I came in later, um, but I just wanted to ask because I've been seeing people um pack, especially the pure water rabbits that we drink water from. They pack them and sometimes some women come and they are like, if you have these rabbits, pack them for them, they'll come for it. I just wanted to know, do you um, have any points where, um, collection points where um, these rubbers are taken from? Or how do I pack this rubber somewhere and then somebody comes for it? Or where do I go to put it? Like, I just wanted to know from this. Um, yeah. Hello, Amma. Hello, Amma. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure I see Amma on the call at this point. Um, you may still want to drop in your questions in the chat box. We'll get the answers and we'll get back to you with um with them. So once just a very big thank you all for joining. The network hasn't been too favorable, but uh, we've been able to pull it through and we've learned one or two things. So thank you all very much. I'll see you in the next webinar. Thank you. Jem Ghana, would you still want to ask your, your question for the future? Just to come back to that. Hello. Hello. Yeah. 
Um, I just, yes, um, I would like to ask a question. However, since um, she's not online, I will, will type it. But before then, I just want to apologize for joining late. It was due to uh, circumstances beyond my control. Yeah. I hope to be early in the subsequent uh, webinars. But however, my some of my team members have joined. They have seen our executive director is there and our communication and um, policy advocacy officer is there as well. So I think we are represented, though I'm late, yes. Okay, that, that's very fine. Uh, that's to go that, after that on the line. Okay, okay. My, my, I could ask a question so that you relate to her. Sure. Um, I I wanted to know, we as um, local NGOs um, who are working to improve the lives of um, young girls and uh, adolescent girls and young women, including those living with um, disabilities, what are the intended employment opportunities that her outfit can um, propose to us to um, work closely with her or with them to um, provide some kind of um, employment for them since there are a lot of um, singles, uh, single, single um, use plastic all around at least maybe um, they may have some innovative ideas where they could share with us, us here meaning the NGOs, so that we could also mobilize um, these adolescent girls or young women and then um, try to see how best we can um, maybe train them to, to be able to um, support in, 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 in cleaning these um, things, as I said, and that, will, that, that can create some um, employment for them. Yeah, so that is what I, I have to ask. Mm -hmm. So, Akalama. I mean, I mean, yes, Amma, so there was a question. Okay, so they want to know how um, your NGO is actually working to improve the lives of girls and maybe people with disabilities. What are the ready available jobs they can they can do? What jobs can they do? Hello. Yes, Amma. Hello. Please, is a question for me? Yes, it's for you. It's your lecture. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I didn't get it. Sorry. Please, the question again. Okay, so there's a question here. So your what is your organization? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um mm -hmm. how is your organization trying to help the local NGOs? Okay, so this particular person that speak comes from an NGO that helps improve the lives of mm -hmm. uh, young girls with disability okay. women. So they ask that what jobs is readily available in terms of what you do for them to help, I mean, to help your project and equally to make a livelihood out of it. Okay. So um, what, what we do is that uh, we have, we've employed women. The company basically has more women than men. So what they do is that um, at the various collection centers, like I mentioned, like the Nungwa, the Kwabenya, and then the Ladma, we have women there. What's, basically what they do is the sorting. For them, the guys just bring the plastics to them and then they do the sorting. So that's one kind of employment that we have. And then also um, we have people for them, we call them aggregators. What they do is that they go into their various communities, places that we are unable to go to, based on improper household planning or something. But basically, the Abobo Ya guys that we've been seeing them, what they do is that they go into the various communities that we are unable to go because of uh, our layout, our planning system, our household planning systems. 
So they will go to, from them. So we give them money. That's maybe let's say 200 CDs. So they buy plastics out of the 200 CDs. Then when they come to our side, the prices that we sell, we, we buy from them is different from what they also buy from the people. So let's say when they buy from the people at one CD, when they come to our end, we either sell it. I think the highest price now, based on all, all is, is one CD 50 pesos. So when you buy from them, you buy it at one CD 50 pesos. So that's some kind of employment that are given to the people now. Okay, so if 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 they are interested in bringing um recommending some women, how do we how do they? So I mean, we can talk after this this call. Okay, after it's for sure. It's fine. Okay, it's fine. Okay, okay, sure. Okay, all right. Thank you. You have yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. You have to be available, right? A a quick one. A quick one. Can I? Please feel free. Um, we yes. are, yeah, we are in we are in Tamale. We are in Tamale. Jem Ghana is in Tamale. Okay. Uh, so, okay. um, as you said already, okay. can can we continue mm -hmm. with the conversation later so that um we we could also mobilize unemployed um young girls in Tamale to collect these plastics, but because we we okay. are in different. Okay. Yeah, sure. so if we are able to collect, get um, these girls and then give them, um, maybe we, we structure mm -hmm. it between that company and us so that we we'll get these girls to gather these um, plastics. Is there a way they can, they can, they can come down or up to the, to the north to collect them or even if they won't come, but we can uh, transport them. We can, we can send them through a vehicle to Accra to them or they have a branch in Tamale. Okay, um, we can do that. Now we have, we work with one company in Kakrali. But then one big challenge we have is transportation. So if you're not able to gather the plastics in larger quantities, it would affect you, it would affect me. In that we all know how our transportation prices have gone up all the, all the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I know they're going to Hold on. Okay. Please, did you get me? Hello. Hello, Anna. Hey. Please, did he get there? I think we can pick this conversation after. You did mention transportation, okay. actually, okay. um, a challenge. Okay. And my question for sure. you is, um, based on the various meetings you you mm -hmm. have been and uh, the kind of conversations and the high level meetings mm -hmm. you attend, mm -hmm. do you think or when do you think the government will want to ban the use of plastic, single use plastics? Yeah, for that, I honestly can't give an answer because we don't see it to be happening anytime from now. Though there have been a series of conversations on them banning it, but as a stance, seeing any anything to show, so we are just we are we are still there. We are waiting for them. But have they been able to give maybe um the why why do you think it's a it's a it's a huge challenge? Well, well, one challenge we can say is that um, we all know our system here in Ghana, like everybody has his or her own interest in it. So it's one problem. And then the other problem is that it looks as if the relevant people who are supposed to be brought on board are not brought on board. So at the end of the day, you want us to come and work on something that we basically don't have any idea about. So how do you expect us to come on board and help? So I think one thing they can also do is that when they bring the relevant stakeholders on board, it would help all of us. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Is there any other question? Is there anyone who wants to ask a question, please? Is there anyone who wants to ask a question? If if not, then 
I'd want to say a very big thank you to all of you again for joining in today's session. Um, um, we'll see you in the next session. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you too.